crises that we've seen, COVID, Russia, Ukraine, have put the Green Deal first on steroids and then supercharged it. So the, the on steroids is obviously the 750 billion investment package called Next Generation EU, which a lot of it will go to the investments needed to make the Green Deal happen. And the supercharging is obviously the Repower EU, where we have a new parameter in our objectives. I mean, we don't want to be sustainable or net zero or whatever we want. We have a new parameter in the system which is called No Russia. We identified more specifically one trade agreement, which is the Energy Charter Treaty, which dates back to uh, 1994, uh, to which all EU countries are party, except Italy and the EU. So we are party twice to this treaty. And this treaty protects foreign investment in uh, in the energy supply, including in fossil fuels and in nuclear energy. By, uh, the, the protection is done by allowing foreign investors to sue our governments for any changes in our energy policies, in our energy law, uh, in private arbitration, and they ask for billions of uh, euros of compensation. So we are actually need to put our act together for consumers, because without the consumers we will not do this. This is actually the area of the energy expenditures where we are completely off track. And we need to be able, we, we need to acknowledge that and we need to tell consumers. Consumers are not, uh, I mean, we are all, all adult and we should treat consumers ourselves as adults in the room. Uh, because hydrogen really resembled the, the failure of the past, especially in the investment community. Uh, so eight years ago, I was still a PhD student uh, working on a hydrogen storage tech solution. This is where the inception of H2Go Power uh, was. So thinking about if somebody is generating hydrogen, how are we going to store it? Because the way you store it might not be very scalable. So thinking about this problem wasn't very new because before, before that time, people also thought about it. But the industry wasn't there, uh, the time wasn't there. And the climate conversation, this is before Paris, the Paris Accord, so the climate conversation wasn't an interesting one, although we knew since the 50s that there was a climate problem. Um, so this was a bit ahead of, uh, ahead of time, that's why uh, it was very, very difficult to actually raise money for this business. And the only reason we exist today is because of public money. So overall, a lot of good things in this uh in this communication, but we need to turn them into reality. And for that, Commission, Member States and private sectors need to work in the same direction.